guys! I'm here today to talk to you about the third book that I read for Japanese June. In case you are unaware, Japanese June is a project that's going on all of June, wherein me, along with three other booktubers, Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, Colleen from Little Ghost Creations, and Vanessa from Chabotsky are, are all reading Japanese literature during the month of June, and we're going to talk about it and share our love for Japanese culture and stuff. So I'm going to link our TBRs in the description in case you haven't seen them. And let's get on to the book that I have to talk about today, which is Some Prefer Nettles by Junichiro Tanazaki. This video is going to be extremely short because I don't have much to say about it, unfortunately. This is the second Tanazaki that I've read. The first I read was Naomi, which I read last summer, and I really didn't enjoy Naomi that much. I thought it was fine. I thought his message was a little heavy-handed, and I just didn't find myself caring a whole lot, and I think that those things definitely apply to this novel as well. It's sad for me to say, but this book was a complete slog, and it's only 150 pages long, so it shouldn't have taken this long long for me to read as it did, but man, it felt like it took forever and I just could not wait for it to be over because of how little I cared. But I felt like I needed to finish it because this is a modern classic in the Japanese literature canon, so I felt obligated to finish it, but it was not a pleasant journey. This is a story of a husband and wife, Hanamae and Misako. They are very unhappy in their marriage. They do not love each other, they are not attracted to one another, and they really want to get divorced. They have for several years, in fact, but for some reason have not. They just keep putting it off and putting it off. They'll do it eventually. So this is an examination of why they hate each other, and the very strange relationship that they have with their son, who knows that his parents hate one another, and yet will not divorce one another. And I think that that would have been... Uh, interesting in and of itself if it had really just been a discussion of their relationship and an examination of them as people but so much of this book is also devoted to discussion of Bunraku Puppet Theater which I have studied in class and think is an interesting subject but was so boring in this book. There was just so much about it that was about the puppet theater. I, I think it would be extremely confusing if you don't know what Bunraku is anyway and I know about it and I just I just didn't really care a lot and the, the idea of puppets is used for several different reasons of comparing reality and fantasy. It's definitely used as an idea of, uh, of performance and how they're performing this marriage and pretending to be happy even though they're so unhappy. And also this book is very concerned with old versus new. This was written in the 1930s, so Japan's borders have only been open to the rest of the world for about 50 years or so, and there is a influx of all of this foreign culture, uh, European and American culture that Japan has never seen. Generally young people are very open and accepting to this new culture and there are some traditionalists who really hate the influx of new culture and are desperately trying to preserve the old traditional Japanese culture. So there's a definite tension between there that is emphasized over and over and over again using the images of puppet theater, of tea ceremony, and it just is so heavy-handed and not subtle at all. I think that Tanizaki is often re renowned for being a master of subtlety. The blurb on the back of this book says that Tanizaki use a subtle flavor, but these themes are not subtle at all. The characters and their motivations and basically all the, everything about them is subtle, but the actual themes themselves and Tanizaki's concerns are, you, they beat you over the head. So I just didn't really find myself caring about the characters that much and really, really not caring about the discussions of old versus new because they happen very frequently. And I think that they were an important question, yes, but I don't think that Tanizaki is doing anything particularly interesting with this question. I think that it's much better addressed in Naomi, which I did actually like better than this, even though I didn't like that book either. And I feel like I might be done with Tanizaki because these are the themes and the concerns that he has, and I think that they are relevant and I think that they are valid and important. Sure, I just don't necessarily really like the way that he decides to discuss these themes, and I don't think his stories are very compelling. I don't think that this couple was very compelling, and the tension of the will they, won't they was certainly not very compelling. I, I couldn't wait for this book to be over, unfortunately. It's one of the worst things that I've read this year so far, and I cannot wait to read something better because this was a very much a letdown for Japanese June. I don't know how many of you out there have read Tanazaki or how much you know about the Japanese literary canon, but in case you have, I would love to hear your thoughts on Tanazaki. I think what I'm saying about him because he's such an important literary figure is sort of somewhat blasphemous, but 
I didn't like it and I'm okay with saying that. I would love to hear other people's thoughts on it for sure. I'm sorry to say that I cannot recommend Some Prefer Nettles and although it is a beautiful book it is one that I will not be holding on to. Thanks everyone so much for watching my review of Some Prefer Nettles and I will see you in the next video. Bye.